Oceanfront development can be found up and down almost every square foot of the Atlantic seaboard, not here. And the reason why that never happened is because this is one of the most severe natural environments in the United States. Still, there are structures out here in the dunes of Provincetown and Truro, a handful of primitive shacks, no electricity, no running water, and famously inhabited over the years by a range of artists and writers like Eugene O'Neill and Jack Kerouac. It is an absolutely, unbelievably in inspiring place to be. You feel like you're in another world. But nor'easters aren't the only challenges dune dwellers have had to contend with over the years. Since the establishment of the Cape Cod National Seashore in 1961, the ground under these shacks has been ever-changing. Different park administrators shifting levels of tolerance for these stubbornly rustic outliers. I have used that shack since 1946. Now, the Cape Cod National Seashore has ordered a group of long-term dune dwellers to get out. They just decided, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna broom these people out like we were some kind of infestation. But we're not an infestation, we are this place. The Park Service has opened up bidding for eight shacks, new 10-year leases with no limit on how high the offers can be. Imagine that. It's the pound of flesh again, you know. It's so, it's so immoral. This is Chronicle on WCVB Channel 5. It would be hard to find a more beloved figure in Provincetown. Because of my age, I get, I get a lot of respect from everybody now. <laughs> so I can say almost what I want. I don't give a sh damn anymore. <laughs> nope. Blink. 95-year-old <laughs> Salvatore Del Deo, celebrated painter and founder of two legendary Provincetown restaurants, Ciro and Sal's and Sal's Place. Del Deo has spent the better part of 77 summers painting in a remote dune shack known as Frenchies until this year. On June 29th, rangers from the National Park Service forced the Del Deos out and boarded up the shack. When we got a letter in March with an eviction notice, I actually thought that maybe this was a mistake. And I wrote them back and I said, uh, are you sure that you meant to send this to us? Romolo Del Deo, Sal's son, and a sculptor of international stature. His late mother, Josephine Del Deo, spearheaded local support for the creation of the National Seashore. Josephine Del Deo was leading the fight. You gotta understand the last letter we ever got from the Cape Cod National Seashore was an invitation to be their keynote speakers for the centennial of the creation of the National Park Service. We thank the park again for what they've done. And that was in 2016. And we go from being keynote speakers for the National Park Service to being evicted summarily with 30 days notice. When the park took the shacks by eminent domain in the 70s, a lifetime tenancy was granted to the elderly Frenchie Chanel, but she had long since turned care and maintenance of the shack over to her friend, Del Dale. His name is on the building permits and tax rolls, but the park says Del Dale has no rights to the shack. And, you know, as if we'd wandered and broken into a structure and just squatted there. Every piece of wood here everything about this place we made, we built, we bought. We pay taxes on this property. We are not interlopers. Superintendent Brian Karlstrom of the Cape Cod National Seashore was unavailable for an interview. Speaking for the park, Bill Burke, park historian and cultural resource program manager. Ground rules were that Burke could not comment on the ouster of the dune dwellers or the open bidding process for the shacks. Burke insists the park is acting in the shack's best interests. We're moving forward. We need to preserve these shacks. We want to preserve the stories. Seven of the 19 dune shacks are operated by local nonprofit arts groups, which award short stays by lottery. These aren't affected by the National Seashore's recent actions. The rest of the shacks are connected to families who've been in them for decades. I was here when I was three weeks old. Janet Armstrong's parents bought their Trudeau shack in more than 700 acres of dune land in 1948. The park offered them a lifetime lease when the shack was taken by eminent domain in the 70s. Since her parents' passing, 
Janet Armstrong has been issued one-year special use permits. Then came the letter this summer saying that she and her husband, Gilbert, had 90 days to pack up 75 years' worth of family history and get out. It's a nightmare. It's an, I mean, I have nightmares that the ocean's going to come sweep it up away, but those are nighttime nightmares. This is a living nightmare. It's small solace that when the shack comes up for bid, Armstrong and Burke can make an offer like everybody else. And to be outbid for your own place by somebody who's got a ton of money is almost bigger insult to the injury. Meanwhile, Sal Del Deo may not be as spry as he once was, but he's as spirited as ever. And he says he isn't above a little civil disobedience. So just in defiance, the other day we went out for supper and we ate and drank right outside the shack. They even boarded up the outhouse. Imagine that. Now, originally the Cape Cod National Seashore mm -hmm. said they would announce the winners of the new leases September 1st. But they've pushed that date back to the end of the month. Meantime, Superintendent Brian Carlston, he is moving on. He has a new assignment with the national parks out in Denver. In Denver. All right, up next, dune life is no day at the beach.